Welcome back to Amber and the Truth, where we, well I mean me, expose the truth. The gospel truth, that is. And as you can see from the title, Faith Like Abraham and Job, I wanted to have a conversation on faith. Um, From what I can see across the internet and just dealing with people, well, Christians, and understanding where they fault at and what's the biggest problem and what as a church we struggle with. And I've come to notice that we struggle with faith. In some sort of way, all Christians struggle with faith. But there is levels to it. Now, if you were like Abraham and God told you to bring your son or daughter as a burnt offering and for you to slay your son or daughter, a lot of you would be hesitant. And including me, honestly, I would be a little hesitant. Like, um, God, you sure? I can't just, you know, you can't just bless her or bless or, you know, like, you know, I would bargain a little bit with my father. I would try to. Majority of the people would be like, I would have a hard time trying to do that. You know, the type of faith it took for Abraham to hear what God said and to go and do it. And it's not the fact that he he actually laid Isaac on the, the wood for the burnt offering part. It's the fact that God told him, go to such and such city and give up your son as a burnt offering. And the fact that he didn't even tell Isaac, he could have told Isaac when Isaac was like, father, where is uh, the lamb that we're supposed to, you know, uh, do the burnt offering with and Abraham was like God will give us one and in high sign he was right but at the same time like Isaac had no idea the lamb was him <laughs> and that type of faith that takes from a father um a lot, when a lot of people tell that story they they go in about how Adam Adam well wow, how Abraham must have felt and how he must have been sad or angry or or upset or hesitant in a way and I don't get that when I read that verse I didn't get none of that honestly got that he trusted God with his whole heart no if ands or buts about it he trusted him okay God you said I'm offering my son as a burnt offering okay let me go to where I need to go and get this done it wasn't no questions it wasn't well if and mm, I, mm, I don't know mm, no it was none of that he went and did what he had to do and going back to the faith of the Christ of Christians I noticed that that's a thing that a lot of new Christians and Christians in total just struggle with having faith in God. And I can completely understand that because he's physically not here for us to see all the workings and all the protection that he does for us each and every day. Everything he saves us from each and every day. I can understand that. I get the logic of that. But the whole point of faith is so that we can receive unconditional love and give our love back to him. If God showed us everything that he was doing, we would start putting us we would start putting our trust in the things he were doing and not in him. If you knew every day that God saved your life from a car accident or if you knew that every day he added an extra on to your paycheck or you knew next week you were going to come up with a blessing of $100 when you needed that $100 or you're going to come up on a blessing of a TV and you needed a new TV or whatever it may be. If you knew that If you knew your blessings were coming on a such and such day, you wouldn't even be praising God. You would be like so thankful for the blessing. You would be too focused on the blessing and what it is and which one you're getting the next week. You wouldn't be focused on God and what God has for you and what God wants for you. That's the whole point of faith. The whole point of faith is to honestly lean on God. It's the whole point. I understand how difficult it can be. I I, I get it how you can't see him doing anything. So it's like, how do I trust so this is what I told my best friend because she's um, new in her walk with Christ. I was like, start with little things, just small little things. If you're in high school, if you're in school and you're, you're a student, I would say, let's start with the things that you are struggling with at, co- uh, at college or at high school, whatever it may be, a test or a subject or anything like that. You relinquish every single thing that is holding you back from passing that test or understanding this subject or a bully, or whatever it may be, difficult teacher, you relinquish all of that to him. Give it to him. God, I trust you. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how I'm going to learn this subject. I don't know why so-and-so is messing with me. I don't know why this and that. But I trust you. And I know you have my back. And I know you're going to eradicate. I know you're going to get rid of it. I know you're going to help me. Start with little things. And if you notice that prayer got answered, boom, there you go. There's your, there's your rock for trusting God. Oh, he answered this one prayer. 
If he can do that, oh, he can snap. He can answer all of them. And as long as they're biblically sound and as long as they're reasonable and they make sense. Asking God and praying for a million dollar home when you don't have a job, that's not, that's not, how, that's not how that works. No. But praying for patience and then God gives you that same opportunity to be patient instead of being upset and caught off guard and acting like, oh, woe is me because you had to wait in the line. Actually, thank God. Like, thank you for having to wait in this line. Ask for patience and you give me the opportunity to be patient. Notice what God is giving you. Notice how God is helping you. He always looks out for us and has our best interest at heart. Whatever you are struggling with, he is willing to help you with. And I know a lot of people have struggling with faith. Church, we have to get ready for his coming back. And we're having too many arguments about things that don't matter. Was Jesus black or was he Middle Eastern or um, which Bible to read or which doctrine is sound? And yes, that's important to an extent. However, we need to be focused on our relationships, our personal relationships, and also getting other people to start their own personal relationships. People are so busy or just hating or casting or, or, or pointing out sin and none of that matters or relationship matters. You know how you start that? With faith. Faith will be everything for you once you figure it out how to trust them. And I say it start with little things. Once I started noticing that God answered my little prayers, I mean just little small ones, I was like, oh snap, like God really hearing me, God really hears me, and he answers, like what is crazy, like it blew my mind the first couple times, because I was just like, oh snap, God is real, which I knew that, but you know, when he answers your prayer, you be like, you get reminded all over again, like this ain't a game, God is real. So what I want to leave with you today, is that remember Job lost his entire family, he lost his entire family all of his stock, everything he had, and grew boils on his skin. And he never once cursed God, blamed God for anything he went through. That type of faith, to know that God has your back even when you have nothing, we need to exert that faith on an everyday, regular basis. So I challenge you to think about the situation of Abraham. Ask yourself this, if God told you to sacrifice your son, would you have hesitated or would you have done it? That shows you where your level of faith is at. And then ask yourself this, if God took away everything from me today, I mean everything, would I curse? Would I be upset? Would I be mad? Or would I still reverence God like I do? Just food for thought. I want to thank you guys for listening for another episode of Amber and the Truth. And as always, I will see you or you will see me next time. Bye.